what could happen if you could just put everything aside for a half an hour. For God so loved the world, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. How do we get the message of the cross of Christ and the victory at Calvary and the miracle of the empty tomb out? How do we do that? Let's find out. And it starts right now on Paid For. Oh, you're in the right place this Sunday morning. You're listening to the Paid For program. And here's your host, Andy Hollander. That's right, you guys. You are in the right place. You are on the Paid For program, and I'm your host, Andy Hollander, and I'm so glad. I really am that you joined us this morning. This is our second week of being on the air. And, you know, I thought, what way can we start this show that would make it so obvious why we're here, make it so simple? Let's think about this this morning. Here's Robin Mark. Wonder of your cross shall be our meditation. Let's all join Jesus at that cross. Gather in that shadow as the sun went down. That dark day. To weep with those who thought that you You were leaving Jesus, the humble King who never wore an earthly crown. Just to think that he was going to be king, we thought he was going to be our king, and now he's gone. Somewhere to go because of all the fear. With love and tears to leave you in a borrowed grave. No choice but to leave his body there. To go with Mary to that place they laid you, where they laid you, Jesus. And in the morning, find a stone. that wonderful cross. The Bible says this, that on that first day of the week, very early on the first day of the week, it was Mary Magdalene, Mary of James, and Salome. And they came to the tomb, and by then the sun had risen, and they said to one another, who will roll back the stone for us? Out of the groove across the floor at the door of the tomb, and when they looked up, they distinctly saw that the stone had been rolled away. And going into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting there on the right side, and he was clothed in a robe of white. And they were utterly amazed and struck with terror. And he said to them, Don't be amazed. Terrified, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Until the declaration he is risen, you are risen, Jesus. He is not dead, behold, he lives forevermore. Hey, the cross, oh, the wonderful cross. Oh, our glory 
Integrity Music. All the way from Ireland this morning. Get the album. I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, boy. If you need to get a hold of us this morning, the prayer line is open. The connection line, 231-580-6304. How about the website, Jesus? Oh, he paid for it all. There's no O in there, but it's just Jesus paid for it all dot com jesus paid for it all dot com love to hear from you there's a few videos up there and archives of the show what a week it's been what an absolutely cool thing to be in week two here of the show and today we've got a bible study coming up and a sermon and another sermon and a kid's sermon and maybe another sermon i'm just kidding there's not that many sermons you guys Hey, uh, out there, if you're a tax preparer, if you know your way around numbers, 989-831-8400, call Terry up there at Macomb County, DHHS there. Terry's looking for tax preparers. They do a free volunteer service for the community, helping folks out. It's pretty cool. And we're headed into the fall, which means that the turkey run's going to start going there. Coming up right after me is the Heaven is My Home show with Gary Myers. You'll probably hear the turkeys that we're gathering here later in a few minutes. But before we get those turkeys together, it's time for... Well, you know what it's time for. We're going to go into our Bible study segment. Oh boy, you guys. Somebody's got to turn me down a notch because I am just way too excited today. That's kind of a common criticism that I get, believe it or not. You're listening to the Paid For Broadcast with your host, Andy Hollander. Now, Bible study here is not the Bible study maybe some of you are used to. Maybe maybe you've never even been to a Bible study. But here, we just take you into one chapter at a time, and it's three to five minutes. We're in and we're out, and we just highlight a key verse. And last week, we talked about Genesis chapter 1. And those of you that were here last week, you remember we talked about you guys remember what we talked about? Let there be light. There it was. We talked about let there be light in that God, when he speaks, things come into existence. And now we're in the second week and God, once again, we're hearing about God making everything. And we're hearing about Adam who gets to name all the animals and everything else. But here's what happened. God came to the point where he had everything that he wanted to create created, except for one thing. And it's in uh, Genesis 2, uh, verse 18 this morning. Now the Lord God said, it is not good. It is not sufficient. It is not satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper mate who is adaptable and adapted and suitable and complementary for him. And that is when God decided to make a woman. And he made the first woman Eve, and he, and he did it by taking right out of Adam's side. He just took a big a big piece of, you know, we think about the rib or the side, but I wanted to, sh- to tell you something. See, God, God's not used to being alone. See, God, even even in, in the, first, uh, the first chapter there in the book of Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and it's the plural there that God always has existed in three persons. It's, there's only one God. There is only one God, but he exists in three persons, and that's called the Trinity. Jesus Christ, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. And so when God had created everything, now think about everything that, that has been created was created with the exception of one thing, and that was the helper for mankind, which was going to be womankind. And God decided, that day, he decided to make a helper that was going to be exactly suited for man. That was going to be exactly suited for man, and he created a woman. Isn't that amazing? And when that, when all that happened, oh, there was a big party that day in the Garden of Eden. And I want to tell you that the, the point is not that you get into a relationship with someone else today. The, the point is that God recognizes that it's not good for a human being to be alone. That he is a God of community. He is a God that is always calling people into relationships with other people and with his creation and with created things. And Jesus Christ came and he had, he had his disciples and he had people that he was very well bonded with. 
And so if you are alone out there this morning, I want to let you know that you don't have to be alone. The first thing that you can have immediately is you can have a relationship with the God of the universe. The Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you can have that immediate relationship. You can have that immediate salvation relationship, but then you can also have the relationship of being a friend of Jesus Christ. He said, look, I'm not going to call you guys servants anymore because you know what I'm doing. I'm your master and you know what I'm doing, so we're going to call each other friends. And he decided to be a friend with you. And you can sing that song, I am a friend of God this morning. And then I will tell you what happens that when the cross of Christ comes into your life, when Jesus Christ comes into your life, that Jesus Christ, he's a very social God. He wants you to come into social contact with other people and you're going to make friends. In fact, when Jesus was here on earth, he said this. He said, look, he says, you you can give up all your friends, the friends that you had before you came to follow me, and you're going to get a whole bunch more friends. You're going to get a whole bunch more things in your life. Ultimately, you know, there may be some good things, there may be some bad things, but the point is that that's that life of God that we talk about here on the program. So it was not good for man to be alone, and that's why God created woman. That's pretty simple and easy today, and that's not a bad thing to say if you're a married guy out there this Sunday morning. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we still got the kids' sermon. Oh, Jack the Turtle is going to get, you know, Jack the Turtle is going to have a pretty decent day today. If you want to be a part of the program, 231-580-6304. Did you guys all get to check out the website yet? Jesus, he paid for it all, dot com. JesusPaidForItAll.com. And I had somebody ask me, Andy, is it a four or is it F-O-R? It's F-O-R. So JesusPaidForItAll.com. Spell it out. There's some videos on there now. And there's some teachings. There's a links to last week's show. There's links to our sponsors, you know, Boneyard Seed and Mr. Marvelous. And actually, boy, I think, yeah, I think I do hear Scott from Boneyard Seed. Here it comes. We'll be right back with the kids' sermon and the sermon and the other sermon. And maybe another sermon. We'll be right back. If you want to get that big buck in, you got to give him the food that he wants to eat. And that's why my friend Scott down there at BoneyardSeed.com, 616-520-5249, is the man you need to call. BoneyardSeed.com. Check out the trophies. Check out the pictures. Get that buck up on the wall. Scott down there at Boneyard Seed. BoneyardSeed.com. No fillers, no games, just straight seed. Now go ahead and grow some bone. BoneyardSeed.com. Hey, what's going on, guys? We are back with the Paid For program, and you probably hear that little voice. That's my son, Manny. Manny. <laughs> I'm sending Poppy a Did you owe me a soda? Oh, no, he's going to do Jinx, you owe me a soda. Well, Manny is here, so you guys know what that means. That means... Jack the Turtle! Jack the Turtle is coming up. That's right. So... We're going to have our children's sermon, and it's going to start right now. So if you have any kids around, go ahead and get them gathered around the radio because it's going to be time for the kids' sermon. And where we left Jack the Turtle last week, do you remember, Manny? Yes. Where did we leave Jack? Uh, in a cage. Yeah, Jack. well, Jack had just, remember now, Jack is a turtle, and Jack was not being obedient to his parents. Yeah. He ended up in the middle of the road. And the next thing you knew, Jack was getting loaded into Manny's minivan, and he was headed back to Manny's house. And so he was very scared indeed, and he was remembering what his parents had said, which is what? Oh, don't go on the road. Don't go on the road. That's what his parents told him, is never cross the road. Well, Jack made it all the way to Manny's house. And the good thing was that Jack found out that Manny was a very nice little boy. He was such a nice little boy indeed that Manny got a, uh, a, a bowl for, for Jack the Turtle and he put all Jack's favorite food in the bowl because Manny knew exactly what he liked. And Manny got some dirt and Manny got some water and Jack was out on Manny's back deck. And then as night began to fall, Manny had to go inside and go to bed. And so Manny fell asleep, and this is the part of the story that Manny doesn't know what happened. 
because he was sleeping. But Manny has a pet rabbit, Mm -hmm. and Manny's pet rabbit's name is... Pookie! Manny's pet rabbit, Pookie, has a secret. And Pookie's secret is that in the middle of the night, Pookie can get out of his cage. And he does this because Pookie has big... Teeth. Yeah, rabbits have big teeth, and Pookie can push that little, little piece of metal and get out in the middle of the night. And he goes hopping around the yard sometimes. Well, this night, he he was getting out of his cage in the middle of the night, Pookie was. And he heard he heard a little voice. And do you know who, who that was, Manny? Jack the Turtle. Yeah, he heard the little voice of Jack the Turtle. And Jack the Turtle was calling out, Mom, Mom. Dad, Dad, and Pookie very carefully climbed the steps. He went hop, hop, hop up the steps on the back deck until he looked and saw Jack the turtle. And Jack was there, and Jack was crying, and Jack was scared. And Pookie said, what are you doing down here, little rabbit? And Jack told him the story, and Pookie said to him that Pookie had a similar experience And Pookie said, the only thing that we can do, the thing that we need to do first whenever we get into a bad situation is to do what? What do you think that is, Manny? Um, to listen to his parents. Listen to your parents, but in this case, they were going to pray. And so Pookie and Jack, just standing right there in the middle of the night, decided to pray. And they prayed this prayer. Dear God, we pray that you would help me find my parents that's what pookie and jack said and next week we're going to come back and hear what happens and see if their prayer got answered well thanks for joining me kids now manny i wanted to ask you coming up in a couple months there's going to be something going on and you've been gathering things in your room haven't you what have you been gathering in your room um do you remember no they kind of you eat them at thanksgiving time they go gobble 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 yeah, turkeys. Turkeys. All right. Well, let's let's. Do you remember that one day I came home and I found all those turkeys in your room? Do you remember what that what that day was like? Well, let's let's play it for everybody so they know. We'll be right back, guys. Manny, what are you doing in here? I'm getting turkey. Oh, you're getting turkeys together, like Gary Meyer said for the Heaven Is My Home show. That's right. Well, if anybody has any extra turkeys like we do, call 616-824-7009. That's 616-824-7009. Now, Manny, listen, we can't have turkeys in your room. Mom's coming home really soon. We got to get this mess cleaned up. Hey, guys, that was a pretty quick break, I hope, for everybody. Man, we are getting right through the show so fast. But I hope that you remember from the start that we're meditating on the cross today. You know, the wonder of the cross. And now it's time to get into our main sermon message, which is out of the letter of uh, 1 John. You guys remember that um, there are four Johns, at least, there in the Bible. You've got the Gospel of John, which talks about the life of Jesus Christ, and then you've got these three letters right toward the back of the Bible. If you open up a Bible, you're pretty much right at the end when you get to these letters of First John, and these are letters that are written by an older man, and he's looking back on his time spent with Jesus, and this is out of First John 1. It says, we are writing about the word of life in him who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard whom we have seen with our eyes, our very own eyes, whom we have gazed upon for ourselves and have touched with our own hands. And the life and aspect of his being was revealed, made manifest, demonstrated, and we saw and are testifying to and declare to you the life, the eternal life in him who already existed with the Father and who was made visible to us as followers. You know, Jesus Christ when he came onto this earth, he came into this earth in a fleshly body. The God of the universe came down and he and he took on flesh and he made himself of no account. You remember where he was born? He was born in that stable nearly two thousand years ago. He was born in a stable of all places. He was he he was placed in a manger. He was placed in the place where you wouldn't even want to go if somebody gave you a, a morsel of bread from that trough. 
that he was placed in, you'd probably say no. And yet this beautiful baby boy that became the, the, the savior of the world was placed in that manger because his mom had only one place to, to put him. But he is the word of life. He's the one that we have heard. In the, in the Apostle John tells us there, we've heard him. We heard how he preached. We heard what he said. If you read in the Gospel of John or Matthew, Mark, and, and Luke, you see that Jesus was all the time, he was preaching about who God is and about how to be part of the kingdom of God and that we have seen him. They saw the miracles. Think about walking around with Jesus Christ and he's walking around and you're, he's teaching you, but even as he's teaching you, there are people coming up to you and they have t terrible you know, just really nasty skin conditions, and yet Jesus is is touching them. He's speaking to them, and they're they're instantly healed. There are people that don't have limbs that are they have limbs that are not working. They may have never walked, and yet there is Jesus, and he and he heals them. He makes it so that they can walk, so that they can uh, see. He opened the blind eyes. This is the Jesus that we're talking about. And then he says this, it wasn't enough to just hear him and to see him, but if you look in that verse that we just read, that they also touched him. And you could probably remember, and some of you may know the story of that day when when Thomas, you know, Thomas didn't believe at first. He was, you know, after the resurrection of Christ, Thomas said, I'm not really sure that Jesus really came back from the dead. I really need to see it for myself. And Jesus appeared to the disciples and he says, hey, Thomas, it's me. Did you want to touch? Did you want to touch the prints of the nails? Did you want to touch in my side? You know, there are there is a point that we all come to where we have to know for sure that Jesus Christ is real, that it's not just about a building, it's not just about a message maybe that you heard when you were a kid, but that Jesus Christ can come into whatever situation that you're in and deliver on his word, deliver on his promise, deliver to you personal delivery of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And that's what the Apostle John is saying. He's not a young man when he writes this. He's an older man, and he says that, look, we know with certainty that he is the life. He is the very life that gives life to everything. He is the firstborn from the dead. The Bible calls Jesus the firstborn from among the dead, that he might have the preeminence, that he might be the number one thing in all of creation. His name is Jesus. You have an opportunity every single day of your life to get to know him for the first time. And then even those of us that know him already, every single day we get a chance to know him better. His life is the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not yet understood it. But maybe that day is coming when some of you out there will understand him even more and more. You're listening to the paid for program. The website is jesuspaidforitall.com, because he did. jesuspaidforitall.com. We'd love to connect with you. The connection line is 231-580-6304. That's 231-580-6304. March! Lift right. Get back here, recruit, because it's time for the part of the show where we're going to whip you into shape. That's right. It's time for boot camp. Welcome aboard, recruit! Oh, yeah, that's right. It's boot camp. Some of you thought you were going to get out of here without going to boot camp today. Well, that's not going to happen today. Get back your recruit, just like he says there. Well, here's what I wanted to talk about today is first thing is this. There's a lot of people that spend a lot of time talking and then you ask them what's going on. And they say, well, I was thinking about doing this or that. I was thinking about it, this or that. Well, you know, there there is a time for thinking, but there's also a time for doing. And remember, this is boot camp now, so this gets real, real, okay? So I want you to th I want you to think about something, which is, you may have heard the show last week. What is it that that you were supposed to do last week? And tell yourself whether you did it or not. Maybe you didn't hear the show last week. Maybe there's been something that's been sitting out there for a long time. Sometimes we have stuff that sits out there for years and years and years and years and years, and we never act on it. And why don't we act on it? Well, I can give you a whole laundry list of reasons why people don't act on the things that uh, they know in their heart they're supposed to do, but that's not what we're called to do. You know, Jesus sent out people, he sent out this group of people, his disciples, and he sent them out two by two. So here's a little strategy. If you've got one of those things in your life right now that you know you're supposed to do something with, 
We talked about the resume last week. We talked about, you know, looking for the other job if you're in the dead end job or sometimes it's a relationship deal, you know. Sometimes it's not even a relationship thing. It's something to do with, you know, what you you feel that God's calling you to do. Maybe it's a project or an art piece or something like that. I probably have 10 right now that are just sitting out there in the do nothing land. So I'm kind of preaching to myself one more time here today. But if there's something out there that you know you have to do, why don't you go out two by two, just like what Jesus did? And the other person, they may not do anything for you or with you, but that at least you can find somebody to partner with you that'll actually motivate you when you get out there to do it, especially if it's, so, if it's something challenging. No, I'm not talking about the easy stuff here, but I'm saying if you've got something that's a little bit challenging to do, why don't you find somebody that'll go out with you that you can do it together and really get it done? All right, I think we better let them go. What do you think? Platoon dismissed. Yo, what's up, you guys? I wanted to tell you about where I actually got this computer from, the resale shop in Howard City. Mr. Marvelous, Kurt Marvel. He's got an Amazon semi-load full of stuff there right now. The prices can't be beat. The service is the best. Mr. Marvelous, Kurt Marvel, he's the owner, he's the operator, 231-937-6542. Don't take all my stuff when you're there, though. Give me a shot at some things. See ya. Hey guys, we're going to end it today just like we started it with the wonder of the cross. That's got to be our meditation. That's the focal point of all of human history. If you get on one side of it, you're in a great deal of trouble, but you come on through to the other side and things are looking pretty good. You get to have that life and have it more abundantly. And you can be like the Apostle John and say, I have heard, I have seen, and I have touched with my hands. And that life was the, the light of my life and is the light of my life. Coming up next, it's Gary. Heaven is my home, the birthday boy himself. And Skip. And then Pastor T coming at you after that. Oh, you guys are going to have a great day. I just know it because the Word of God says so. All right, love you guys out there. The wonder of your cross. To weep with those who thought that you were leaving. You were leaving, Jesus. The humble King who never wore an earth. Love and tears to